let's set up an interactive keyboard control stream for TikTok Live. This is completely free to set up and it will work with most video games. The way it typically works is the viewers send gifts and they control different buttons on your keyboard. Now the requirements for this are pretty simple. You basically need access to Windows PC streaming. That means access to Live Studio, which might need up to 10K followers or access to a stream key and you get stream keys by joining free TikTok Live agencies. I'll put a link to agencies in the description. Anyway, you also need access to Tickfinity, which is free and I'll show it later in the video. And obviously you need to own the video game that you wanna play. And as I mentioned, it basically works with any game, but the most popular ones I've seen are usually Forza, GTA and Minecraft. So let's break this down into segments and we'll start as you can see in these examples by making the keyboard image that you see at the bottom of the live stream. And we are using Canva for this. It is a completely free image editing software. I'll link it in the description. In the top right, I'm going to click custom size. The width is going to be 1080 and the height is going to be 640. And we'll just create a new design. Then you just want to head onto Google Images or find any image of some arrow keys. Once you've found one you like, just right click, save image as and save it in any folder. If you want to remove the background from your image, then I'll put this image remover in the description. It's completely free from Adobe. Anyway, let's head back to Canva and you want to click on the upload section and upload files and upload the picture of your keyboard. So here is mine. I'm just double clicking. It should appear on the left. And once it's uploaded, I'm now going to click on it to add it onto the canvas. And of course, I can click on it and make any changes. I think I'm going to make mine just a little bit bigger. Remember, this is going to be the bottom third of our stream, like in these examples. So I've got mine positioned where I want it now. Now, of course, we should add some gift images or a way for the viewers to know what to send. Worth noting that sometimes TikTok will randomly restrict your stream if you put gift images on. It seems very hit and miss because I sometimes see streams with thousands of viewers displaying gift images, but then other people come in my Discord and Tickfinity's Discord and say that their stream has been restricted for showing gift icons. So you could put gift icons, you could put text, or you could replace it with emojis. If you're looking to get the gift images and download them, just head to the Sound Alerts page on Tickfinity. If you don't have a Tickfinity account, we'll get to that later. But on the Sound Alerts page, just create a Sound Alert and on a select trigger, just right click and save the image as. You have to be on the Tickfinity website here and not the app. So let's just do a mix here of emojis, images and text just to show you all three. So I've already uploaded the file of the rows here, so I'll click on it to add it. Then, of course, I'll shrink it down. So let's make the rose icon the up key and I'll place it wherever I want. So that looks fine to me. Let's click on text and you could add any of these text styles. I'll keep it simple. I'll click add a heading and I'm going to double click it, replace all the text. I'm going to open the emoji keyboard on Windows by pressing my start button and the period full stop button. I'm then going to type ice into the keyboard and I'm going to find the ice cream cone that I want. I'll use this one and then I'm going to click off and click back on to drag it wherever I want. So I'll make the ice cream code gift the left button. And if we just want regular text, once again, I'll click add a heading. And for example, let's make this one the TikTok gift. So I've typed in TikTok. I'll make it a bit smaller. I'm going to click off and then back on so I can drag it and I'll put it there. And just because I've already uploaded it for a previous video, let's just make the Galaxy the back button, even though that's obviously way more expensive than all the other gifts that I've added. Of course, I encourage you to get a bit more creative than this. You probably want to replace the background. But anyway, whenever you are happy with your design, hit the share button in the top right. Then we're going to click the download button. And we're going to accept the PNG suggestion and we'll press download. I'm just going to call mine keyboard image and save it wherever you want. So that is the bottom part of our stream. Let's add the bottom part, the middle part and the top part to our live stream now using either Live Studio or OBS. It is very similar steps in both Live Studio and OBS. I'm going to show you guys Live Studio because more people have access to that. I'm going to make sure firstly that I am in the portrait mode. Then for me, I'm going to click add scene in the bottom left and I'm just going to choose the blank option with no themes added. And again, let's add each third in and we'll start with the gift image we just made. I'll click add source and we're looking for the image button. We'll click add again and just select where it is. Once you found it, click add source. It usually adds it at the wrong size. I'm going to click on it and stretch the screen and then I'm just going to drag it all the way to the bottom of the screen. All right, next up, you want to add your gameplay in the middle and you click add source. And usually for gaming, that's either game capture or display capture. 
I'm gonna choose display capture and just choose my third monitor with the cursor captured and click add source. So that's added it and centered it perfectly. There is a bit of a black gap between these two. So I'm gonna click on the bottom one and just drag it up to fill the space and center it. Now for this top segment, there seems to be two different approaches. Some people seem to do like a sleeping type stream. So the viewers think that they are controlling the stream while the streamer is sleeping. It's usually just a looped video. Often it's not even themselves. Alternatively, you could just add your camera. Let me show you both of those. Now a quick warning on the looped video before we show that, it does seem that sometimes TikTok will try and restrict people's live streams for this. I'm pretty sure that TikTok would prefer that you are present in the live stream. So make sure you're following the TikTok community guidelines and the terms of service. So firstly, if you're adding a loop video, just click add source and then just find the video option and click the add button. Obviously the main one is the loop option here. If your video doesn't have sound or if you don't want sound, turn the sound off with the mute button. Click select file to find your video. If you are using a sleeping video, I do highly recommend you record your own one and don't steal somebody else's content because that could be a copyright violation. Anyway, I don't actually have one, so I've just picked a random Fortnite video just to show you guys the process. I'll click on the video on the left. I will drag it to the top. And once again, we have to expand it because it doesn't add it properly. And I'll drag it into place. I'll fill this black space again and we'll just resize it accordingly. So there we go. If we pretend the top one is a video of me sleeping on repeat, we've now got it set up. If you are using OBS, it's a very similar process. In OBS, you add a source, you add a media source, and you choose the loop option when you're adding it. Just quickly, of course, let's add a camera instead. This would be my personal preferred method. If I'm doing this type of stream, I click add source, click on camera, and let's add my second camera. It's obviously a bit lower quality. Make sure your camera is the highest possible quality. So for me, that's 1080p and 30 FPS. Yes. And I'll now click add source to add it in. And once again, I'll just resize it a little bit to get it in place properly. So now let's move on to linking TikTok live with our game. Just before we get to that, every single week, I send over 1500 creators free advice on how to monetize and grow your live streams and content. Things like good tools, case studies, and tips for growing your stream. Again, if you want to join over 1500 people, that's free and it's linked in the description. All right, so let's link up with TikTok live now. And first, if you had Tickfinity open in your web browser, you will need to close it now. And that is because instead we have to use the Tickfinity desktop app, which I've linked in the description. And if you don't have it set up yet, start on the setup page. At the top of the page, sign in with your email and then type your correct username into this box. And also on the left, click TikTok login and login to TikTok. Once that is done, we're gonna to head to the actions and events page. And this is where the magic happens. This is where we're gonna add the keyboard controls and where we're gonna link it with gifts such as a rose. So let's start by linking the rose to our up key or our W key. And I'll start by clicking create new action. And I've named my action W key. And firstly, if we scroll down a little bit, you may want to put some text on the screen saying who sent the gift and what they've done. And you may optionally want to use text to speech to read out loud what's happened. So if you want to show some text on the screen, check the show alert box. And by default, it'll show their profile picture and their username. So I've typed sent brackets gift name and press W key. So in this example, if I sent a rose, it would say Harry sent rose and pressed W key. That would appear on the screen. Likewise, if you want text to speech to read out loud what's happened, then you can check the read text TTS box and basically copy and paste the top one and add in the brackets username. So once again, this time it would read out loud saying Harry sent brackets gift name and pressed W key. So let's move to the key step now. Let's scroll down a little bit. Those two were optional, but this one is required. We're gonna check simulate keystrokes. Once it's checked, click on select keystroke. And for our W key, all I'm gonna type into this box is W, but there is a key step coming up and that is to install the compatibility mode. So I actually already talked about this in a previous video. So I'm now gonna take you back to a past version of Harry who's gonna walk you through it. So to make Tickfinity compatible with more video games, you just have to check this box. You'll be prompted to install this plugin. You'll be sent to the download website where you'll download the zip. Once you've got the zip, just right click extract all or I'm just gonna extract it into its own folder. Then all you have to do is double click the exe file. Then we'll just quickly run through the installer, just accept all of the defaults. It doesn't take long to install. I'm gonna uncheck the release notes and press finish. So thanks to the past version of me, you've now got auto it installed. You now just wanna check the enable game compatibility mode box. 
And next, you want to decide how long the viewer is holding the W key after they send the gift. So for this, 1000 milliseconds is one second. So I've changed mine to 3000 milliseconds. So three seconds to hold the W key after a gift. Anyway, you choose your length of time and just press save. Scroll down, the display duration only affects these two options here, the TTS and the show alert. So if you've got those added, then change the display duration. I'll change mine to four seconds. It doesn't matter if you're just simulating a keystroke. Scroll down and we're gonna repeat with gift combos. So if you get two roses, it's gonna press W twice. If you only want the most recent gift to be controlling your keyboard, then you skip on next action. That's a debate for you because what that means is if you're getting a lot of gifts, then basically some of those gifts will be ignored and the viewers might be angry. So if you're not sure, just leave it unchecked like I'll do. If you have this warning message here, click on the link inside OBS, add it as a browser source and inside Live Studio, add source. I'm gonna add this as a link source. This is for the alert and the text-to-speech. You won't need this if you haven't added the alert or the text-to-speech. Anyway, I'm gonna go Control V. I'm gonna set some custom dimensions. I'll set the width to 600 and the height to 400. I'll click on Add Source and I click on the link on the left to see where it is. And I'll place mine in the middle of the screen. Once again, this is where the text will appear saying, Harry sent a rose and press the W key. Anyway, once it's added, press Save on your action. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just press the duplicate button and just press yes to duplicate it. And I'm gonna duplicate it for each button press. So WASD obviously. And I'm gonna double click this one and name it to A key. I'm gonna double click this one and name it to S key. And I'm gonna double click this one and name it to D key. Of course, we're not done there. We do need to make some changes inside. So I'll edit the A one. For me, I have to edit it both here a bit further down here and the most important one is select keystroke and change it here not wa just a all the other options will be fine i'll press save i'll save again and just repeat that same step for your s key and d key by the way worth noting at this stage if you are using the arrow keys instead you just click the relevant button so you click this one for the up arrow now while i was editing this video i noticed i missed an important step here so don't make the same mistake as me when the viewers activate these buttons, they go into a queue. So it would make sense to have a separate queue for the up and down, that is the W and S, and a different queue for the A and D, the right and left. To do that next to your D key, just click on the screen number and change it to screen two, and do the same for your A key. And if you've got any additional keys, I would put them on screen three. This just means the viewers can't be pressing A and D at the same time and W and S at the same time, left and right, up and down at the same time. One more step before I get back to the video, just scroll down a little bit and make sure these queue lengths are increased to a thousand. Or if you don't want somebody spamming a massive gift streak, for example, 200 roses, you could massively lower the queue length instead. And as you saw earlier, I added screen one to Live Studio or OBS. So make sure you do the same step for screen two, add that as a link source to Live Studio or as a browser source to OBS. And if you're using screen three like me or any other screens, add that one as well. With that important note said, let's get back to the video and let's create some events. Now we've got our four arrow keys added, we need to link them to our events. And if I go back to my image, you can see I've got a rose, a TikTok, a galaxy, and an ice cream cone. So we click create new event, sending a specific gift and type in or click on the drop down selector to find the gift you want. For me, the rose is the W key. So I'll click on that one and we'll just save it. And basically repeat these steps again. Let's repeat this one for ice cream cone. Just find the gift you want. Find the relevant one for me that was the a key and press save and let's just fast forward and do that twice again there we go now at this stage we could test it we'll get back to that in a second but first as a little bonus sometimes streamers like giving the viewers a like goal and when that like goal is hit it activates an additional button press so let's do an annoying one for minecraft let's just activate the t button which will obviously open the streamers chat and stop them using WASD. So let's quickly head back to the actions and events. And once again, just gonna duplicate for the T key. And we're gonna head back to our overlay gallery now. We don't need an event for that one. Actually, sorry, it is the goal overlay page. Set yourself a like goal and just set it to either double or increase. Where it says action on reaching, hit select and find the relevant one you want. I'll choose the T key. 
You could choose the WASD keys or the arrow keys again if you wanted. Now we just add the goal into Live Studio or OBS. Again, in OBS, it's called a browser source. Inside Live Studio, add source. I'm going to choose the link option, press add. Control V to paste it. And I'm just going to reduce the width to about 600. And I'll click add source. So again, it doesn't really add it the correct size. That's not a 600 width. So I'll just increase the size of it a little bit. Place it wherever I want. At this stage, we need to make sure two more things have happened. We can click back into Tickfinity. If I don't want it to say likes, if I want it to say T key, so it's more clear that once they hit 1000 likes, then the T key will get pressed. I'll change it in the title. But also to get this action working, make sure you go on the actions and events page. I can see mine's on screen one. So make sure you've clicked on the screen one URL if you haven't already and add it as a link source. As you can see, mine is already added here. But if it's not added, you need to add screen one. Okay, so now it is time to test everything. And you can see my screen is looking a bit ugly because I put Live Studio, my game, and Tickfinity all on the same screen. Again, this can work in most games. I'm going to do mine inside Minecraft, but I've seen it working on Forza, GTA, and many other games. So although Tickfinity does have this event simulator at the bottom of the page, it doesn't work for the keystrokes. So what we have to do is underneath the actions, we just press the play icon. So watch on the left, the text should appear. I don't actually have my speakers on. If they were on, it would have the text to speech as well. And it gives you five seconds to move into your game and then it will activate the keystrokes. When you're actually live, there won't be that delay. But that delay is required because otherwise it would try and press the W key inside your Tickfinity, which you don't want. So let's press the play button. You can see immediately on the left, the alert has appeared. And within a few seconds from now, as you saw, the W key was now pressed for three seconds. You can watch these videos to learn more about controlling both GTA and Minecraft.